But Klinks actually isn't because he just has kind of terrible stats. Right. So it's probably okay to be in this type of position. Prepare for battle. Cobra looks so much like me. <laughs> just wait until you lose that weight. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome in. To everybody tuning in on the live stream, we've got Evil Genius is facing up against C-Deck, probably the most hype match of the day. C-Deck have been doing extraordinarily well in the group stage, probably blowing pretty much even the most fervent C-Deck fanboys' uh, wildest dreams out of the water with their performance so far. But they are facing one of their toughest opponents, Evil Geniuses, who have been uh, a pretty standard top three prediction for most analysts. Yeah, EG is... You look smart by just calling EG a top team, right? Mm -hmm. like, it's it's <laughs> That's not a very difficult. It yeah, it's not a very difficult association to make. You say it's like saying Secret's going to gonna be really good at this international. <laughs> All right, uh, or LGD. Like everybody thought LGD was. I think that was. A, I, I know people like to say Vici, but uh, I'm pretty sure I heard most of the personalities. No, way more people had LGD. Yeah, LGD yeah. as like a third place slot, and Vici Gaming was more yeah. like a fifth place slot. So things are kind of. Evening out. Um, I guess the biggest surprises for me are both C deck and Empire. I thought Empire would do uh, a lot better, but the so far it hasn't begins. happened. In you and me both, buddy. Yeah. You and me both. But this Let is pretty much a game of like two titans. Mm -hmm. C deck is a team that has so much going for them. They're a huge underdog. What um, is I mean, they're clearly proving they're not an underdog, actually. Yeah, anymore. Like, going into this tournament, they would have been, like, if this was the first match of theirs in the group stage, they would have been, like, the biggest underdog. But as we can see, c -Dick, they're just hoping to be able to get, uh, I mean, just a tie they'd be happy with against Evil Geniuses. EG really want to be able to take this clean 2-0. We've got a Samael Lina facing up against Shiki's Bloodseeker in the middle lane. A bottom lane, we do have an aggro tri lane of Cedex. Got aggressive, Q, and Carter. They've already brought counter wards to lane and managed to take away. First blood mid. First blood. Oh, the ticks, and there it is. Samael, that First last blood. Dragon Slave, is able to pick up the kill. Oh, man. I watched that the entire way through. It was so weird. Sumail just kept right clicking him and then uh, Shiki actually put Blood Rage on himself. With, he had 200 HP left and then Sumail just right clicked him to death. And that's the third time I've seen out of four games Sumail get a solo kill mid. That and guy's just so aggressive. Too. That guy's just so aggressive he just always finds the opening for that first blood before anyone else can. Radiance top yeah, that, tower the fact that he attack. keeps getting solo kills mid is just it baffles me. Like, they really need to respect him a lot more. Um, he's really unique as a mid laner because he pretty much values right-clicking you over CSing. Like, a lot of people go for heavy last or denies, but Sumail just runs attack. at you non-stop and establishes lane control and tempo in this way. Like, he might miss a few CS early right. as a trade-off, but he's perfectly content with just getting the right-clicks off on you to establish lane control as fast as possible. Right, it's all well worth it if you manage to, I mean, obviously pick up first blood, but even just pushing the hero back and establishing the dominance from there is going to be able to get you that CS advantage by, like, the four or five minute mark, so... Samael is, as you can see, really utilizing that extra range of the Lina's. The extra 70 range he has over most heroes. Dyer's Putting Dyer's pressure on the Bloodseeker. Meanwhile, this aggro trialing was kind of interesting from C deck to start things off. They placed a very early counter ward that managed to take away AUI's triple mine stack that he had on the right side of the lane. Um, but now, everyone seems to be kind of flip flopping. The universe came down to bottom lane, making it a uh, Tusk Techies <laughs> lane. But now we've got uh, Xe, our Darkseer, as going to be soloing things up. Seems like they just want to keep pressure on Fear as much as possible and leave the Darkseer against the Tusk Techies, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, this lane setup is actually really advantageous to C-Deck. Uh, to oh, as no, as the Courier! It's going to get picked oh, off. No that way. was just a hatchet. Um, so no regen was actually coming in. That's really weird. I mean, the hatchet, he still would have been very low on HP. If Samael actually managed to land like a Light Strike Array and then Dragon Slave and Shiki came forward, even just harass him with Dragon Slave. Like, but Shiki, unless he can somehow get those last hits, Samael up in his face. I, I just don't see how a hatchet by itself is good enough. Man, isn't that the Han term? Hatchet? It is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say calling Excuse blade. Me. It looks like a hatchet, so that's what I always think of. I look, okay. 
I, I think uh, if you're, bottom if you're, if you're actually well, well, fear, he's going to be going down in the top lane. Oh! Barely just managing to pick up that kill towards the tail end of it. Gardner setting it up with the long-range Fisher. We were just hung around a little bit too long. And see that guy? I, I think this is one of the biggest things that we've seen out of the group stage in order to deal with evil geniuses. you you got to try and shut down um, some of their side laners. Like we saw earlier, right? When Evo were playing up against evil geniuses, they first tried to deal with Samael in the first game. But that didn't actually work out. So instead, they actually let Samael do what he wants and started putting pressure on the side lanes. It was Universe that was really shut down by Evo. I actually think that's the, I was just about to say, I think that's the strategy here is that um, when you play against EG, in my opinion, no matter what, Samil has a good game. He's just the type of player that'll snowball. He plays the type of hero that'll snowball back into the game. All he needs is one or two kill streaks, and then he's fine. Uh, I actually think the better heroes to go for and kill and PPD at top is going to get engaged on, but he should be okay. Um, yeah, but it's already down, so. I just think that it's fear and universe. If you can minimize their impact, just lower the amount of farm that they get, and just make the lanes difficult for them. I think that these are the two heroes on uh, EG that you want to shut down as much as possible. Like, if Klinks doesn't get a good start, C deck can apply so much pressure with the heroes that they have. They've got a Visage, they've got an Earthshaker, those two nukes alone can almost kill them. Right. So if you're C deck, you just want to be able to put pressure onto the Klinks. The Tusk isn't having the best game because he had a lane against uh, Darks here that was constantly ion shelling. And I, I think you just accept that Sumail's going to have a good game. Because if he solo kills your mid and he's got 27 CS, uh, he's just going to win this lane. Like, it's not winnable at this point. They're rotating a support and allowing the Bloodseeker to just pure jungle. And I think this is a better move than trying to challenge him. Like, he's probably going to be disruptive, but as long as you can shut out the clinks during this time, you're going to be fine. Because there's going to be a point where Fear gets his soul ring and a deso and then he just goes around the map three shotting people on cedar mm -hmm. so it's important that they tempo control him early to delay that timing as much as you possibly can right you want to expand a little bit on um shiki's mid blood seeker that is now jungling obviously I've, he's probably kind of My. just been forced into this but the general idea most of the time we see safe lane blood seekers pick up like level six and then full-time jungle it's a little bit different with a mid blood seeker what advantages do you really see and oh, hold up. Top lane, aggressive. He's going to be dove down. The suicide is there, plus the mine and AUI will be able to pick up the kill in the gyrocopter. That is so irritating to play against. Yep. It's just got to be frustrated more than anything. You can't even, you can't really do anything about that. If you're uh, C deck, you just kind of have to let wherever that happens happen. But I guess the advantage of having a Bloodseeker mid versus having it in another lane is just the levels that you Dyer's get. And actually, Shiki might be going down. Oh, Laguna Blade! Oh, it's nighttime, so Samael couldn't actually land oh, that one. Missed careful the light now. strike array, still wants to go for Q. They managed to get a couple of nukes on him. The silence goes down as well, but Samael is still operating with a double damage rune, so they need a little bit of extra help. And that's where Aggressive comes in, but Samael is bottling up and running. Running the long way around. Carter is here to be able to stop him, though. He's got a Fisher coming up. Light Strike Ray already laid down. Not going to be able to get off the Fisher in time. Samael will still be traded away for a support, though. Gracie, well worth his rotation over. Yeah, I think uh, Samael made the right idea there. He was Dyer's trying to catch Shiki. And if he had done the Laguna Blade, it would have been well worth it. But uh, I think the advantage of having a mid Bloodseeker is that you can put something, you can, you don't have to prioritize picking him like this, and you can put another better hero that does more damage into the safe lane, like the Gyrocopter or the Razor, and at right. top, once again, jumping in on Shiki Universe, though, by himself. Like, it's a nice, small combination, the Snowball into the, um, the Shadow Wave, but unless you have multiple heroes, it's not going to do so much damage that you can kill a core straight up, so that's not going to happen, and uh, the little bit of stacking that was being seen, the hard, I, I see Dyer's little, but this is like a five stack. Attack. Yeah, it's a lot, and Dyer's it allows aggressive. He did get ganked early, but uh, he's going to get back into this pretty quickly. And this is the strength of Gyro. It's not just all of the abilities that he has that does AOE. It's that he can do these jungle stacks using the call down because the cooldown is so low. 55 seconds to hit twice onto a neutral stack allows you to farm it insanely quickly. Like, you don't actually need items to be able to do it, just levels. So, uh, C deck are definitely, it's definitely well worth the time to go for the stacks there. And if you're the Bloodseeker, that's kind of the problem here, is that Shiki's so underleveled. He's only level 5, he doesn't even have a 6 at 8 minutes, that I think it's worth it for EG to just continue to pressure him and shut him out of this game entirely. Like, Sumail did die that one time, but he's pretty much still able to go wherever he wants, because they don't want to stick uh, Q mid with the Visage. He just can't live. 
And Garter isn't able to move lanes either because he has to stay on top of wherever Sumail's going. So Sumail by himself is pretty much eating the space of two heroes right now. And this is what happens when you get solo killed mid, is that it snowballs out of control like this. It has an impact on the rest of the game. Sumail's gonna have a pretty fast heal scepter, in which case these cores, Bloodseeker, Gyrocopter, they're pretty susceptible to that magic damage early on. What kind of builds do you need to see for a Gyro and a Bloodseeker in order to deal with that kind of pressure? The Bloodseeker right now just has to get whatever he can. He's about to pick up... Does he go for the minus? The kind of recovery minus? No, because he's struggling to get trend right now. Mm -hmm. I think that going for the Midas would pretty much render your Dyer's team really passive. Is under attack. At that point, you would just hope that the rest of your lineup would go for high. I think that's... Oh, Running in with a surge, great combination. Once again, Fisher leading into aggressive, being able to close the distance be a rocket barrage damage. They are able to pick up the kill and also seemingly take this tier one tower. Doesn't look like any rotations are coming out from evil geniuses, and they don't really have great rotational heroes. And he's doesn't do anything for you. A dazzle, certainly not. And uh, universe by himself is not going to be good enough. Most of EG's heroes are made for counter initiation. They're not actually made to take fights because how do you initiate a fight? You snowball a Tusk that isn't very farmed, who just hit level 6 in. Your techies, you could probably blow somebody up, but then you would lose two heroes as Dyer's a result of that almost instantly. And Zeta can fight you from here on out, so... Maybe it would be worth it for the Bloodseeker, actually, to still get a Midas, because I think his team actually can 4v5. The Darkseer almost has a fully completed mech. He's only the buckler away. Radiance um, bottom tower there are enough levels right attack. now on C-Deck to survive, and Aggressive is going to farm two stacks at once, so his amount of farm is actually going to be really decent, too. Dyer's top tower is under attack. He's still going for the Helmet Dominator. Bottom tower is under attack. So looking to stack up the Ancients and get that really big farm advantage. I'm still concerned that leaves him a little bit low on HP pool. Um, where do you go after that Helmet Dominator? Is S and Y a uh, target here? Do you go for the earlier BKB? I think S and Y might be a little bit better. Why is that? I'm thinking about it right now. No, he should he should go for the BKB. Okay. I think you can Radiant's survive pretty much anything that you can throw at you if you get a BKB. The suicide attack will still hurt, I think. If they if he snowballs you from Og. And I guess you can get wall response. I don't know, most of EG's abilities Dyer's do go through is magic under attack. Like when Sumail gets an Aghanim Sumail, um, the Laguna Plague is just going to destroy him, so he Radiant's probably needs some sort of stat item attack. first after the Helm of Dom. Mm -hmm. like, I think getting an SMY is perfectly acceptable here. Okay. Because it kind of feels like, uh, especially with the Yule Scepter coming up on the Lina, if they don't have that early BKB on the Gyrocopter, they're going to need to just keep the Earthshaker near the gyrocopter constantly in order to prevent the Yule's Light Strike Ray the good to play combo that will pretty much one-shot Gyro. Yeah. The hopes there then is that you trade immediately with the Lina because once the Lina uses that combo, she's actually really susceptible to death. She has 4 armor, 872 HP. You never really want to be in a position where you're not looking for one-for-one -one pickups there. Yeah. Um, you're just looking to find one hero and kill. If you run into multiple heroes, it's almost like you don't want to do that unless you're in the far back line and you have backup with you. So that's kind of the weakness right now of EG's lineup. Is if they get into a 5v5 fight, you can almost anticipate them losing two heroes pretty quickly. And so they have to be really smart about how they take these engagements. And if you notice, they're not really trying to take these engagements. Like they're just trying to split up and farm, create as much pressure as possible. And this is what I was talking about. When Fear plays Clinks, he just gets the Soul Ring Treads, and then he kind of just goes around uh, looking for opportunities, uh, scouting out heroes. And that's why they wanted to gank him early to slow this kind of timing down. Tower. Normally he does this around nine minutes. Eternal Envy does that quite a lot too, where he just like, he picks up his clink and just full time in the enemy jungle, bouncing back and forth between the uh, safe lane and mid lane. And just, you know, jungles up. If he finds an opportunity to get a kill, middle lane, they're going to be able to take out XZ. Big pick off there, Samael. Finally makes use of that Yule Scepter. We also saw earlier the techie suicide. That was pretty obvious what was going to happen, so. Nothing very special about that. C deck, um, despite missing their darks here, are gonna go ahead and try and take an early Roshan. This is the advantage of having Blood Rage on your team, the increase of damage. They also have a very early medallion from Q. And it seems like, due to the lack of vision from evil geniuses, they're not gonna be able to spot this one out in time. This is so huge for C deck right now. This is the safest objective that they can go for because they don't know where the mines are. They don't wanna have to focus on that. Roshan they realize that EG just can't fight into them right now. Earthshaker plus their supports are just better. Alina 
can't really do much against Dyer's the lineup that Z-Deck has, especially once she blows her Jewel Scepter, and there's not much that can protect her. Like, the Dazzle can grade for you, sure, but Dazzle's not an offensive hero. Techie's is definitely not an offensive hero. It's like a passive-aggressive hero. You wait for people to die to you first, <laughs> and then you can get aggressive on the map, but Z-Deck have an incredible five-man roster, and I'm a little bit worried right now for EG, because with that Aegis, it's going to allow Aggressive to get really aggressive on the map. The Bloodseeker is steadily starting to catch up. He hasn't died in quite some time. His CS still isn't the best, but you never really want to be in a position where you just kind of allow him to get back into the game for free, and that's what's happening right now. I'm slightly concerned if this is going to be a uh, the five man from C deck. I'm concerned that we see fear going from Medallion. It's pretty normal for Clinks, but I almost feel like you need to speed up your Desolator timing just to give you more split push pressure in order to kind of offset the very clear five man that C deck is. I think going for the medallion is still okay. Uh, it's not ideal in these types of games, but you're, you're gonna go for the Deso anyways, and it does increase your damage for free. For 900, it's really cheap. And then you go for the Solar Crest, which is incredibly strong against a Bloodseeker who's so under farm. Right. Like maybe he does still go for a Midas, because the rest of his team is doing really well. And, uh, the Gyrocopter is gonna go for the SNY, which makes sense, right, if you think about it. If he goes to the BKB first, he still needs the SNY for the stats. Because yeah. there's so much that goes to the BKB. There's actually no reason for him not to go for it. Otherwise, he'd have to go for something like a Satanic first for the Raw HP pool, or a Scotty. And he doesn't want to do either of those things. Going for the SNY allows him to fight. And I think when you're this far ahead, going for drums is just game losing. Like, you want to build into the late game. Right. CDX start pushing on that tier one tower. You can see Q trying to ramp around here, does place a rather aggressive Radiance ward, but not much is, is going to come out of this. CDEC are just going to take the tower, tower and Evil Geniuses will treat this as time to be able to farm and maybe a little bit of split push. AUI does pick up his level six finally at the bottom lane. He's got a lot of mines around the map. Yeah, he does. And, uh, the Bloodseeker does opt to go for the Hand of Midas. And I don't know how many mines that is. Is there a way to check? Uh, well, Techies, you can click Dyer's on him. Oh, tower. he's gonna get it! Picks up one, Shiki, that's a big kill. Fortified. Bloodseeker goes down. That was four different mines. He was, he had 13 at one point, so. Alright, so much for the comeback. <laughs> that's a free snipe for AUI. And it's a huge one, because the Bloodseeker was starting to snowball a little bit. Like, he was catching up in levels and farm, and you don't want him to be able to just do that for free, like I said. And EG's lineup just can't really pressure on the map very well. Like you have the clinks in the Alina, but both heroes can get traded out. Oh, they so have the easily. right idea. They've been searching for this techies, and they will be able to actually get the kill. Fisher goes out before the suicide can from AUI. Nicely played. Fear immediately trying to cut the creep wave in the middle lane in order to allow his allies to take that middle tower, at least put some pressure on it. Fear starts backing up. He forced a couple rotations. Universe, meanwhile, doing something similar up there in the top Dyer's lane. Middle I mean, that one pick up. CDEX still have a great opportunity because they, they they have Aegis. They can go ahead, grab a gem, fight man into you know the Dyer's tier one towers that are left, attack. maybe even get a tier two here. I just don't see anything stopping them from doing it right now. You know, what? why why is that middle tier one tower up if you can afford sentries or a gem and just take it? It's really actually just good play by EG. What they're doing right now is they're splitting the map Dyer's up as much as possible has been and killed. forcing uh, C deck to react to their play. Like, look at Fear. Yeah, nice He pick actually up. isn't accomplishing a ton. He's just annoying them. Mm -hmm. And so they overreact towards it. So Universe gets to push out top. They send AUI bottom. And it's just C deck playing reactionary Dota because what if, you know, there are 10 mines that you don't spot, half your team dies, and then C deck, EG runs you down. Then suddenly you're in a position where you lose all map control against C deck. So you can't really take these chances and not have them pay off. And that allows EG to open up the map. And it is risky by EG, but it's the right play to make. Like get around the map, split up, look for individual pickoffs, just try to slow down C-Deck's timing. C-Deck have an Aegis, and they're probably still not going to be able to utilize it as much as they'd want. Like, out of this Aegis, they were probably looking to take two tier one players, bare minimum. But with the way the game's going, they're just so afraid. And Dyer's I think they're just playing a little bit too reactionary attack. right now yeah. to what EG's doing. Uh, yeah, XD was already going to by the Landmines earlier. The Ice Shard misses, but the Snowball, or maybe just the right clicks, will not that universe in a bad position. He will be caught by the Fisher combo. 
he goes down as well. But they got to pick off on the darks here. I think EG are happy with one for one trades um, that are you know even off laner for off laner situation like that. Just because it stalls the game. Support. The fact that Dyer's middle tower middle goes down tower in the process as well. He actually positions himself in an awkward area, but. Samael's not going to be able to uh, capitalize on that one. We've got a gem now for Q, so hopefully they'll be able to actually take some control of this game away from the techies. But I was going to say, it, it may also go back to C-Dex, um, more passive play and overreactionary. May come down to the Bloodseeker's choice in items. I asked you about the Midas, and you said, no way, that's just going to be a bit too passive. Shiki still went for it, and I think we are seeing the effects of that now. I mean, going for the Midas here, when you assume your team is doing really well, is okay. I changed my mind, Cap. I okay. get to do that. All right, very well. So he decided to go for it, and that was just because of the landscape of the game. They were able to get the Roshan for free. Nobody really contested him. His team was doing good 4 5 but they're just stalling out a little bit longer than I think they want to, and it's allowing EG to open up the map a little bit more. Uh, and they weren't able... See, they actually weren't able to use, utilize that Aegis whatsoever. Like, yep. They didn't use it to get the bottom Tier 2. They didn't get either of the Tier 1s out. They had taken that tier one really early, and so this Roshan was probably just an objective they thought was really safe. There's no way that you can have mines there. So I think this is just more EG playing a little bit of mind games, but C Deck are still in a really good position. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there, there. First of all, there's a couple things to kind of contradict what I was talking about. We, we have watched many teams before in this group stage where we're like, okay, there is some pressure, they should start being aggressive, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. but they've played very patiently and just waited for their opening, and that seems to be a game winner. Like, you don't want to try, just because you, you maybe want to be Radiant's able to utilize that Aegis in five minutes, attack. eight hours, doesn't necessarily mean you should if you can find the correct opening. Um, but also another thing is that CK do not have bad late game by any means, right? EG, they're left with, you know, the, the Tusk, which is a little bit questionable. Um, Lina's obviously good, but, you know, is is Klinks really going to be able to out-carry heroes like Bloodseeker and Gyrocop? No, but that's why Fear is building towards the mid-game right now. He's getting yeah. a Deso soon. I mean, the great thing about Klinks' item build is it allows you to both pick off heroes with the Medallion of Courage, which I think is why he just still decided to go for it. It's just mm -hmm. a good item. Like, it gives you good, uh, it gives you some mana regen, the armor is really good, and the Valor ability is fantastic, so it allows you to look for solo pickoffs using that, and the Deso allows you to both pick people off for Dyer's cheap, and it allows you to split push towers, which I think Dyer's are both necessary for winning fortified. this game for EG. Yeah, I think that's uh, one of the critical reasons. I mean, we talked about how this meta, like, you and I had a conversation very early on to the patch where it was like, okay, this is, this seems to be, like, very team fight, like, the intelligence, Intelligence heroes in general got buffs. We're going to see more intelligence cores come forward, which are more about team fights and uh, maybe some push. That means there's going to be a natural reaction to split push, right? Like there's going to be, if you don't want to fight, you want to try and split push. It seems like Desolator being such a cheap item, um, as well as being able to offer you that, is a, a prime reason why Clinks and our Assassin are seeing a decent amount of play. And the they're smoked up and they're running in and they've got a gem, so they're feeling pretty confident in the team. With the Fisher Echo Sam actually still controlling some L a little bit. They managed to get a rupture on it. Smell just gonna be a straight TV on Universe. He actually managed to save his ally. Now Universe is gonna give up his own life for that, but it's still a big win. That was a five-man gank and only got the offlaner there, saving the much more critical Lena in order to pick up her blink dagger. And all the attention down at the bottom part of the map means that fear is now able to take that tier two. It's denied by aggressive, but it's still map control. Take. Radiant's yeah, middle now you've got a Deso on here, who, and his team's done a really good job of splitting up the map for him. He's level 13 on the map right now. Uh, when it comes to net worth, he's just behind the Gyrocopter ahead of the Bloodseeker and the Darkseer, and he's going to start to snowball it. But still, it's so cost-efficient, awesome. It just allows you to get ahead, and split pushing is so easy in C-Deck. When you're playing against a Tusk, Dyer's bottom it changes tower things. is under like, attack. It yeah. messes with your brain. You think to yourself, we have to five man, we have to stick together, we have to go and walk around with our gem because what happens if AUI had smoked up and, you know, decided to place 20 mines in our jungle? We don't know the end. So it messes with your head and in this mid lane. Yeah, he's trying to go on aggressive, but at the same time, here's coming from behind. He's going to be forced back with that blood right. Even in the awkward position, he should be going down here. Shallow Grave will save him. For the meantime, they want to go farther up. Some mail actually came in and tried to go for Shiki. But it looks like because of that, they started to go up for him and didn't manage to get PPD. At least not yet, anyway. They already have the missile coming out with the vacuum, bringing him over the fissure for the kill. Aggressive gets it with the black hand. Now that tier one 
lift up. Zedek will be able to take it. The rest of the evil geniuses quick to just try and split push as much as possible. And uh, AUI Dyer's has actually boosted straight for an Aghanim Scepter. Radiance so middle this tower is under attack. obviously could be a huge factor. This means it's going to be very hard to push uphill to start with if Zedek ever find that opportunity, but you just never know if AUI is going to be able to single-handedly win a team fight at this point. Samael's going to come in. Yule Scepter onto the Gyrocopter. He does not have the BKB, but the Light Strike Array missed. And that means AUI didn't get the opportunity to lay down the mine where he wanted. Now the call down's going to hit him, so he just suicides up. He realized he's 100% dead, so... Missed opportunity there for Evil Geniuses. But they're still forcing very defensive rotations out from CDAC console. Yeah, if you notice, they're so afraid, they're just walking as more constantly. They're just looking at themselves, okay, what if there is somebody down here? What if there are more mines? I mean, every single person can relate. This is like the one time where you could really reference playing pubs, mm -hmm. where you just have been conditioned in this patch to respect that <laughs> Uh, you walk up a hill, you're you dead, and then you're just like, why? Why did I do that? I knew this was a bad idea. And you just don't want to live in that type of regret. Zedek just continues to play reactionary Dota, but I think with this BKB on aggressive and the next Roshan, this is when they make their move. Yeah. They are behind the net worth, but this is where I think they're going to say, we should even things up. We've got a Blink Dagger, a level 11. We've got a gem. There's not a whole lot more that we can ask for. You could get another BKB on Shiki. I think that's probably what you wait for. Mm -hmm. And that's the timing, is that you got to hit timings in Dota. You can't simply just say, make arbitrary moves and be like, let's push bottom. you got to have item timings. Like, once you get a BKB, what are you really going to get that's going to change anything? You're not going to farm for another 2,000 gold without applying pressure. So I think the smarter thing right now is to, for C-Deck to do is split up the lanes, push them back, make sure you're not getting split push. Oh, Michael Stein gets laid out, Carter. Complete Carter's kill, and they will get it. But Samael has to commit suicide there, and they got TPD there with the tail end of the vacuum. Maxi nicely played from C deck. Two for one exchange, of course, one of them being a suicide, but it's still lots of bloodstone charges from Alina. And seeing that timing, I was going to bring up the same exact thing. C deck, they're about to pick up double BKB, despite the fact that they're a little bit behind in net worth and experience. They can definitely, you know, change everything here by utilizing those BKBs to win some fights and take some towers. EG, though, what's the correct response to that? You map. don't want to fight, right? You do not want to fight into those BKBs. You just try and play, like, very aggressively, like Samel just did, and go for a pickoff on something. Force defensive reactions from C-Deck. If you can make trade-offs or even just get free kills, it delays C-Deck's push. Yeah, exactly. Delay, delay, delay. That's the name of the game for EG. Even if EG have worse late game, they have much better pickoff potential, and their heroes are just irritating to play against. Like, C-Deck don't have the best pickoff potential because their Bloodseeker is so under farm. Like, if this was a level 15 Bloodseeker with SMY, DKB, they're actually going to get another kill here at top, and that's a big one on the Gyrocopters. This just further delays the timing, and they might Same get Universe. Time. Yeah, Universe is going to be caught here, and Chain Totem slows them down. They will pop him. Nice and quick. Still, though, the Gyrocopter kill much more valuable for Evil Geniuses. It just delays the timing even more. I know we've said that a hundred times, and people must be irritated by now, but this is what C deck don't want to happen because they've got a BKB on both their cores. They have dire side advantage, they've got a medallion, so Roshan is free, but EG, if you even slow that timing down by four or five minutes, you're gonna start to snowball on items. As we see, Sumail has a dominant lead in net worth. The Klinx's items right now are particularly strong. Oh, Quite still though, Veer's gonna come in from the side, uphill advantage, doesn't really matter too much, he's still just doing so much, XZ drops by low, Samael actually blinks for it, going for more here, she actually forced to pop the BKB, XZ, the last right click, no, still 70 HP, but that cheap damage from Fear. oh he actually ran out of his death pact, I think that was the last bit of damage he really needed. I actually thought he was really good because the weave was on the tail end. Yeah, he, he had uh, both, I think he also had the medallion on him as well. Yeah, now EG actually has control this road area. Fear's got a death show and a medallion of courage. This is going to allow them to do it so quickly. C deck doesn't have their earth shaker, but I still think you have to take this fight. You've got your BKB up in your gyrocopter, but it's going down so quickly. I don't even actually know if they have time to respond to this. Oh, with the blink in, they definitely can. Already get a two man blink. Universe on that snowball in order to dodge another day. But he's still going to go down here, slowed down by the shell grave. Fear turns into a really defensive combo, but in your life, it's a bad idea. He'll still get the kill, but he's stunned up and only. Sheiki, it seems, as the return. Oh, is he going to get away? 
Nope. She, he just needs the extra bit of movement speed. He'll catch up with fear eventually, it looks like. It's mail. Oh, my goodness. He has to go for the pins and find him in the end. Shiki goes down to some mail, though, with Laguna Blade. Strikes him out nice and quick. Final it down. PPD needs some help. Fisher gets laid out onto him. He will be chain stunned out of this one. And in the end, they manage to stop the Roshan. C Deck are probably going to be happy that. They at least keep that intact, but they lost their two very important cores. Yes, they got three kills for it, but uh, their Blood Seeker down, it makes it, um, I would feel like a rather even fight, just because the the cores maybe didn't Dyer's get as much top from tower is under attack. It will be advantage C-Deck, though, because they're going to get the Aegis out of this. Mm -hmm. This is the benefit of being on the Dire side. Uh, Fear, they actually might be able to fight it, because Fear is going to be up in Dyer's just 24 top tower seconds. Is under attack. Uh, C-Deck's cores are going to be up a little bit sooner than that, but... This next Roshan fight is going to determine so much. EG don't want to give this up, and I think they can defend it, and Steedek doesn't do too much damage. Their physical scores, their Bloodseeker doesn't do any damage in these fights. Like he's got a BKB, but that's about it. Yeah. Even his armor isn't too great, so Fear is able to fight him down 1v1 pretty easily. The Black King Bar does nothing for Fear. Like he doesn't really care that uh, the Bloodseeker has it. And he's got a BKB of his own now, and so it's going to be really easy for EG to engage this. And I think yeah. they want to. It, 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 I'm just not so sure CDX is going to be able to take that one shot now. It's, it seems like we're going to have a big fight. And they already have a couple mines inside of the pit as well. Roshan's healed up to about half HP here. Fear starts leading things off. Shiki throws out the Blood Righteous, gets in vision inside the pit. Fear, daring CDX to eventually jump in and try to stop him because he does have that BKB ready. He's got that Aegis, but his BKB is going to be running out, so he just tries to get away from this team fight. And they're struggling really hard to lock people down. Did he grab that haste? Oh, no. He will die because of that. I don't think it would have mattered. He is so dead right now. That was such a good fight, though, by C-Deck. They just... EG didn't really have a lot. They ran out of steam really quickly. That first shaker Echo Slam was so huge, but EG Fear can make this okay. Aggressive. He turns. Oh, called out. The actor tries to go for the missile. And Fear is now going to be backing back into that one. He knows he has to come into the gyro copter. So going to help him out with those go to blade. They make the one for one trade up. Game just coming back. They want to fight this. Yeah, they're out. They do not want to get into this fight because Zumail goes to the damage. Already, the wheels are drained to light strike away. Picks up one. Shiki will make the TP out. Great fight for Evil Geniuses after what was kind of a wonky Roshan fight. Yes, they got Roshan, but they lost a, a number of heroes for it. And if you look at the fight recap, EG walk away with that at the end there with 1530 gold up. They still lead in net worth despite the Aegis. Um, I mean, they had the Aegis, they almost lost it, or they lost it actually, right? And then yeah. Sumel comes in, completely turns around the fight with that boots of travel. They completely forgot about the blood so leave. They just thought that she was going to respawn at a decent time. And, uh, and the Aghanims... Aghanims... Oh, techies. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, he's but I've been watching him for a while. The, the Aghanims advantage here, it's not about the minefield side. It really isn't. Level 2 mines is enough with an Aghanim Scepter to instantly kill the whole entire creep wave. So all I'm watching is AUY push out the waves faster than any other hero really can. You know, like... I play a lot of Timber Saw, right? I love it when I'm able to get the level 3 Chakram because I throw out a Chakram and I'm whirling death and the creep wave's dead, right? I can do split push amazingly quick because it's kill waves. Exactly what AUI's doing just so much earlier than any other hero could uh, because he just rushed the Aghanim Scepter. And because of that, he's just not getting any opportunities. See, I constantly have to address the side lanes. Yeah, and it's really difficult for them too because they don't want to get picked on. It's gonna get initiated on Dyer's already. He's tower. down and out. Samael with that level three Agonim's Laguna play always makes such short work of the The rest of the team is still coming in from behind though. Cedek. Aggressive's gonna be the first one forward here. And XC blinking forward, managed to get to the vacuum on a two. Carter still Dyer's waiting it out. It's gonna be able to hit the fissure on a Samael. Evil geniuses. I need to mount the response. Maybe they just give up Samael here. Echo Sight gets laid out. Oh, Carter. 
just missing his opportunity for the blink there. Could have gone forward now. Blink forward and the snowball into Gardner, who blinks away from his team. He's going to be hit by the Wolver Twitch here, trying to make that one for one trade off, but will not be successful. The Fisher takes him out, but at the same time, they've already given up their visage, and the rest of the team has to back up. Aggressive and Gardner are low enough. Samael looking for more, though. As his blink dagger and Yule Scepter ready to go, will be able to get in range of the Yules. He's got to be done for another takeoff. An evil genius as well set up to push up hill and force those buybacks. They don't even care, I think, if they buy back at this point. They can back if they want to, but they know the Bloodseeker is just not in fighting shape right now. He only has 1,400 HP. He can't Blood Rage himself, or he'll just get one shot more or less by the lead sign, too. Yeah, it's actually it's, it's a tower advantage. It's down to EG, essentially. So they're going to try and force it anyway. Jump in, back in, TP in for the Grand Seaf Manager. First force and fear is actually stuck inside that fisher. He's gonna come out of the TP out for PPD, but fear's still gonna be run down. Potentially she is gonna be forced away. Fear just has so much damage right now. Aggressive will still be able to get the kill in the end. Her shaker is dying breath, lays out that fisher in order to ensure the kill will EG carry. Aggressive trying to chase away the rest of evil geniuses. And they will be able to recover that gem. That Q drop still, though. That was buyback's force. That was both the Darkseer as well as the Gyrocopter who were forced into a buyback. Only the Lina who bought back before in that earlier fight. Still advantage to evil geniuses. Yeah, EG's Radiant gonna be incredibly satisfied with how that fight went. They got the minefield down mid. Top tower is under the attack. next push is gonna be so much stronger as a result. And it's not like C deck are getting a ton of items to catch them back into this game. But we're not right now. They have to blow the buyback even. And a lot of their damage is just coming from the power of the call down rocket barrage. Uh, once EG, you probably get a BKB at some point on Sumail, then it becomes really difficult to kill him. And your Bloodseeker just isn't expanding his inventory. If you look at his items, he's got a BKB and a Midas, but he's had those items since the last Roche fight. And yeah. even before that last Roche fight, this is what he had to begin with. Same now he's had a Gyrocopter. Like, he's had the SNY BKB combination for so long. And Butterfly is his natural next item because it's going to be good versus the Klings, who goes such, you know, raw, cheap damage, isn't going to invest in an MKB right away. But at this rate, Fear's going to have an MKB before Aggressive can finish up his, uh, his Butterfly. Yeah, probably more importantly is that C-Deck, if you look at both of their cores, the BKB timings, mm -hmm. you've got a 5-second one and a 6-second one. And EG, they still have an 8-second BKB up on that Klings. It's going to make them incredibly powerful, and both teams are going to go for a smoke. And if Sita can win this fight, I mean, they they definitely have the jump potential with the Vacuum plus Earthshaker Echo Slam combination, but it's going to be hard for them because they really need a dream fight. They certainly do, so it may just be all about where that battlefield present, presents itself. Zedek is going to make their rotation around behind the middle lane. They already see that uh, middle is being pushed out by some of the mines from the UI. And it's actually going up to the racks now. Zedek may just have to keep it. Dyer's back. middle barracks yeah, are under still attack. Still want to look for somebody, but the smoke yeah. timing has run out. And luckily for them, EG don't have the best wards in their own jungle, because obviously they're playing aggressively. But this one should spot them coming back around. And EG's going to see this a mile away. It's incredibly obvious when no one is defending the creeps that are hitting the range racks. What's going on, right? C Decker obviously out and about, five man smoking, looking for a pickoff somewhere. So EG just kind of play defensively around this cliff area. If EG are just paying attention, they're going to see the Bloodseeker still has nothing. Like he's mm -hmm. got the chainmail. I presume that's. Just because he's like, I need some sort of item. Like, maybe you go for an Assault Curse. I mean, you just need raw armor right now as it stands. And they do have a decent amount of mines, but the Visage should be able to clean that up. He still has his gem. And I think that's the only one left. That they but if they lose this one, it's going to be... Oh, no, they've got one in base, actually. They won that last fight. And every single time they, they do go for those mining situations, they are oftentimes losing the familiars, which is still a good amount of gold going to EG. What a classic, classic Techies mind spot. Right there in the middle lane in the trees. It's basically because the AOE is big enough that even if they do have a gem, they could just walk straight through the middle lane, not see those mines, and still take all the damage because the AOE is big enough. This is just a frustrating game right now for C deck because they, they're going to ask themselves, like, where did it all go wrong? Why is this game XZ? Trying to get the silence off with the vacuum, but. AUI had that second opportunity. Get the suicide out, the rest is C deck. 
Struggling, not sure what to do. Roshan, potential spawn time in the next two to three minutes. I mean, C-Deck are pretty prepared for any sort of five ban. They've got a really good lineup of counter initiating. Don't get me wrong, the Earthshaker plus Darkseer is really strong. It's just their cores right now that are struggling. If this Bloodseeker was three or 4k more net worth, uh, conceivably they might even be ahead. Yeah, they'd have enough because the techies have a bunch of a net worth lead on pretty much everybody else in that bottom area. The bottom line, that you're not too worried about the techies' net worth. Or you just have to not be. Like, you pretty much have to ignore it if you're C-Deck. You're just like hoping that he doesn't mine you at that point. Maybe a better way to boil it down is that the net worth on the C-Deck cores is just worth more. Right? Yeah, exactly. 3,000 on a Bloodseeker is maybe worth 5,000 on a Alina. It's just such a big difference right now. Because Alina has double right what the Bloodseeker has. Yeah. Like, just kind of comprehend that. Double the Bloodseeker's inventory. And he'd be so happy right now. He's hitting uh, so hard, too. He's got a double damage, I guess, but... Oh, they know but, Fear's um, here. What are they going to find? Fear! Try to vacuum him up. Fear will be able to get into the trees. AUI is hiding out with him as well. See, they actually missed their opportunity. Everybody from now, the EG. Yeah, they're actually going to try back here. All right, the Weave laid out. The Snowball's going to be the first one out. They're going to stay focused on Carter's entry. Doesn't get a good Echo Slam. And they turn things out right. Carter almost drops immediately. She is going to be forced back by a little good blade. Carter's not dead just yet. And Fear puts him damage out. And Exceed jumps incredibly low. Then Weave minus armor. Taking away these heroes. Oh, Carter, he gets caught by Universe. Found him. Sea Decker still trying to hold around this area. And I'm not sure why. Now, already one TP rotation has Maybe he turns it over to the mail. Almost getting a nice snowball save. Goes out to the left hand side over to the great. Ressie with all that mighty armor and the physical damage of the clinks. Make it look easy. Rip him apart. 22 to 6. Almost a 40 minute marker. And evil geniuses gain more and more control of the game as it goes on. And Sumil opting to go for the, uh, the Black King bar so late is such a smart decision. Now you're really starting to see it paid dividends. That 10 second BKB. It just feels like an impossibly long amount of time for C deck. That's kind of the strength of the Lena Yules too, is that if you don't pop your BKB when she lays the combination on you, then you just die to the Lena. So every single time the Lena Yules you and into the team fight, you pretty much have to So as a result, C deck have five second BKBs on both their cores, and it just doesn't last long enough. Like EG Gaia's have enough of a lineup with under various heroes where they can just make the fights last a really long time. Nice familiar drops there from Q to kind of cover his retreat. Got initiated on by the Yule Scepter play. But one of those familiars is still going to go down. Jesus, Samael's just so fast. And such a long range, he still catches tower is under attack. Oh, Jump gonna in XZ. He tried that one. Snowball is going to be pursued all the way into the tier 3 time. The universe immediately pops the BKB with fear on the side. Well, you almost finish off XZ. Finally, Dragon Slave does get him in the end as he's locked in. With the ice shards, the mail links were up there. Doesn't actually do anything with that one. Fears can just wait out the rupture. And they still, Jar comes down for 11 seconds. They're actually going to find more to do with Q dropping. Jets on the ground, and they still need about to five seconds for the gyrocopter, and they do not want to buy back on him, obviously. So, CDX still need another fight, but Samil is another way off of XZ, blinking in and kneeling toward a part of the old set to look good to play. CDX still looking for an opening here, but not able to really fight fear at all. Look at the damage on Shiki Files itself. There goes the gyrocopter, the combination of the universe, and Samil Echo Slam gets laid out, but the damage shield is already gone. Carter, he can't do anything by himself. Run down, he's just buying his team seconds at best. And that's gonna be a lane of rags, probably a second lane of rags, GG. Yeah, they're just gonna call it there. They realize that the there's no such thing as an ideal point for them anymore. The Earthshaker actually had a really good echo slash. There's just no damage on the side of the sea deck anymore. I mean, this game, you can kind of see the direction it was going on early game because of the early death by Shiki mid. Yeah. And this tough start that he had. When Sumail had his Yule Scepter, he was still struggling to get his treads. You're not, that's not really a recoverable position because then it forced C-Deck to abandon their aggressive tri -lane. Like that was actually gonna do a really good job because the Darkseer can beat the Tusk 1v1, they could put a lot of pressure on Fear, but as a result of that death mid by that Bloodseeker, they had to rotate both supports